Okay. Action. So we've already gone over um, supplies, uh, paint, brushes. You've done an experiment. And uh, this is a student drawing. This one is um, Peyton Hightowers. And this one is Gracie Williams. So I have a couple of different examples here, which I copied theirs onto the watercolor paper. So this one, we're going to think about the flowers being um, pink. And so I, this is the liquid watercolor that I've, that I've chosen today. You can think about painting your background first or your flowers first. If you're not so sure about the background, go ahead and paint the flowers first. Because you might decide, I actually kind of like it white. I know Jessie's a big fan of white backgrounds. Um, so we'll see. So what I'm going to do first is make sure that there's no paint left in the paintbrush from a former student that didn't wash theirs out well. That has happened to students many times where they thought they had a clean brush and they did something and it maybe this had black in it and they put it in their yellow and it's ruined. So um, because this is pink, I want to make sure to use a little bit more of the fuchsia. Um, I mean, a little bit more water. So I'm mixing my color first. This is no big deal because it's not really a mixed color. This is just right out of the bottle. But if I needed a special color, work on mixing your paint color first before you wet an area. Otherwise, you'll end up having to, to re-wet that. So if I wanted to try my wet on wet technique here, um, most of you are going to be tempted to just forget the flowers. Now that you've spent all the time drawing the flowers, you're just ready to paint. But if you'll still have your resource nearby, it will help you to make these look a little bit more natural with more variety, um, more variation in the um, values. So I'm wetting this whole area. And remember my tip that if you're not sure where you put the water and it's hard to see it, tip it a little bit. This is soaking in pretty fast and just make sure that you've got it where you want it. Now, if you don't want it somewhere, don't paint that part. Remember how it stayed in the wet areas? So now I'm gonna get some of my color. See how these are a little bit white here? I want that to, to show, so I'm not gonna paint all the way in. And I'm still using this huge brush. It wouldn't be a bad idea for me to um, go to a smaller brush, but as long as you don't press hard, um, I mean, you could almost paint a whole painting with, with one brush. Okay, so you can see that this is kind of bleeding out here. I'm going to try the smaller one. Remember, these are new, so some of them still have sizing in them. That's the stuff they put in new brushes to make them look like perfect, and it makes them a little stiff, so you have to wash that out. And I'm going to use the side of this to help soften that edge a little bit. This is really strong color, so it's painting, it's staining the paper. Okay, so while that part's still wet, I might take a little bit of the, the pure liquid watercolor and give it a little bit bolder edge that can, that can leak down in here. And I'm going to sort of help it to go in the direction that I want it to go. So this is starting to develop already. You have to be patient and don't, you're, you're gonna be tempted to rush because watercolor does go fairly fast. So here, here's another way to do it. You can put the watercolor on first instead of wet on wet and then take a wet brush and spread it out. So there's a couple of different ways you can do that. But you want kind of a soft look because we're working with the organic forms here. So I would be tempted to do all the things that are this color while I'm using that color. It'll just save you time. So I'm not going to complete this one at the moment. I think I'll, I'll do the little yellow part in the middle. So on that, I'm going to put some yellow on here. And since it's kind of greenish, I'm going to get a teeny bit of that blue and make a light green. And while it's still wet, let a little bit of that go in there. So this is leaking out some. That actually doesn't bother me. 
if that bothers you, it, um, a Kleenex will work better than this, but this will work. You can take some of this, roll it up, and kind of pat that out. Now, if you have a puddle, so let me make a let me make a puddle. It's too much. So I've got some color on here, and I put tons of water on. It's going all over the place. I'm panicking. You can take some paper towel and roll it up pretty tight. It's kind of like those blending stumps that we used. And put it on here and it'll you can soak it up from specific areas without patting the whole thing. Okay? So you can kind of vacuum it up. So I'm not going to finish that part right now, but you can see how that's developing. Um, if you can, let white be the white of the paper. Don't plan to go back with white paint. It looks prettier to keep it transparent if you can. Okay, now backgrounds. If you're doing a white flower, say this, this was some of the, the white flowers, your background is gonna be really, really important. That, because the white of the paper is gonna help make the flowers white, make them look white. You're still gonna have to paint them a little bit, maybe with light grays and light blues. So I'm wetting my background first. Let's say we want this to be um, blues. You're gonna have to be patient, but as long as you did a pretty um, neat job with wetting the background, look how those patterns are emerging already. Now, if this goes out into the dry paper, don't leave it like that because it will kind of leave a seam and you want to wet that and just kind of extend it out so that it doesn't end up looking all brushy instead of um, smooth with the wet on wet technique. Does that make sense? So you'll have to work in sections. If you wet this entire thing and then start doing that, um, it's going to dry by the time you get back around to it. Does that make sense? So just take your time. You can layer. I'm going to go back to this one. Maybe I want to make this a little bit darker. Mm -hmm. Maybe use like a little bit of purple in here. Remember we talked about making, um, you know, using artistic license. You can do a little bit of that if you want. Now, you don't want to make a flower that looks like every color of the rainbow if you're going for realism. So I feel like I got a little bit too much water there. Another thing that you can do to pull out highlights is to vacuum out sections by patting and it will reveal that color underneath. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay, so I'm not going to paint a whole painting today. I just wanted, I want you to think about background, think about your colors, think about preserving white. Any questions?